Hi, I'm Susan Patang from The Quiet Zone Coaching. I help people discover better ways to find happiness in their lives and also to manage the stress and anxiety of daily life. Um, there are two things that generally interfere with our happiness and also with our stress levels on a daily basis. Um, one of them is unrealistic expectations and an unrealistic uh, vantage point of what reality is and what's really happening. Um, we're going to talk about that in another video. Uh, but today what I want to talk about is the first thing, which is living somewhere else other than right now. Okay. Um, the past is gone. There is nothing that we can do about it. Now, we may still be feeling the effects of what's going on from the past, um, and that might continue on into the future, but neither of those things are here yet. Um, how much time do you spend thinking about the next thing that you have to do or something that's coming up or something that you want to do down the road? I'll be happy if I get this. If only I could live here, I'd be happy. And then if you do get to that point, you don't feel happy. Has that happened to you? Um, happened to me. And I'm here to tell you that there is a better way. Okay. Um, our lives are made up of all these little tiny individual moments. Okay. And yes, there are some milestones and there are some uh, pins that we have in, stuck in our lives. Um, there's births and weddings and deaths and uh, graduations and getting new jobs and changing jobs and moving to another place or moving to another city. And out of all the time that we spend on this planet, those things make up about that much, okay? What we spend 90% of our time on this planet, in this world doing, is living those little tiny in-between moments, okay? So why not take those moments and make the most out of them that we absolutely can? And that's where we're gonna find our happiness, okay? Is in those little individual moments, not the big milestones, okay? But the little individual moments in between. Um, so in order to find um, the wonder and amazement in those moments, first we have to notice them. And we're going to talk another in another uh, session about developing an attitude of gratitude and reframing the way that we look at our environment and our world. But what we're going to talk about right now that we have to learn first is being mindful, okay? And that's become this catchphrase and, uh, oh, wow, mindfulness, you know, it's trendy, it's cool. Um, but guess what? It works. Okay. So what is mindfulness anyway? Um, mindfulness is simply being aware and observant of how you're feeling, what you're doing, what's going on in your environment right now in this moment, and accepting it for what it is. Okay. So that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? So if it is that easy, why is it so hard to do? Why are we not constantly doing this? Um, well, first of all, it takes some effort. Um, we have to actually make an effort to focus in on what is going on right now. Our society has conditioned us to think, to plan and to think about the future. Um, with nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with planning, uh, nothing wrong with reminiscing about the past. The problem that arises is when we spend all of our time obsessively ruminating about things that happened in the past that we can't change, or thinking about things in the future that may or may not even happen, okay? So, okay, so what is what do we do about this? Um, first of all, creating a mindful lifestyle does not mean you have to change your religion. Um, a lot of people think that mindfulness and its granddaddy meditation, which is something else we're going to talk about, um, that if they practice those things, that means they have to become a Buddhist or that that's going to invite Satan into their lives or some other very bad thing. Um, and that couldn't be further, further from the truth. This is science. Um, they have done MRIs of uh, the brains of people who are meditating. And it shows that new neural pathways are being created between the amygdala, which is the part of our brain where most of our emotions originate, and our prefrontal cortex, which is where those emotions get translated into thoughts and behavior um, and emotion. Um, 
So yes, meditation and mindfulness are core values of uh, Buddhism. Uh, but by practicing those things, that doesn't mean that we have to be a Buddhist. Um, a Roman Catholic, when they're praying the rosary, guess what they're doing? They're meditating. Okay. They're being extremely mindful and they're meditating. Okay. Um, all that means is removing when you're meditating, like I said, that's the granddad of being mindful. Okay. Um, when you're meditating, you are just kind of stopping the flow of thoughts. Okay. Um, you're putting your brain in neutral and the, the Lord's prayer and saying the rosary and things like that are basically, um, doing, doing just that. You're putting your mind in neutral. It's like saying a mantra, um, and not, you're not allowing the thoughts about the outside world to cross over into your existence at that moment. Okay. Um, daily meditation, I think is key, uh, because, and this is from a scientific standpoint, um, to develop new neural pathways in your brain so that the default ones that were created from old traumas and old hurts and old behavior patterns that you want to break, um, to make yourself happy and to reduce the stress in your life. Um, that's something that's necessary on a physical level. Okay. Um, you don't have to sit in a corner for hours and hours chanting home and dangling a crystal over your head. All you have to do is take five or 10 minutes, um, just to stop, stop the, the flow of thoughts, stop the busyness, stop everything and just close your eyes and don't think about anything. Focus on a prayer, focus on a noise in the room focus on a, a, a sound, a smell, um, it, or look at a candle. You can focus on something visual, um, whatever works for you. And I really do uh, recommend to people that they find a, there's lots of free guided meditations online um, that you can use when you're first learning. Um, and like I said, meditation is kind of like the granddaddy of mindfulness, okay? So being mindful, meditation is that practice that we use to heal our brains physically, okay? Um, and mindfulness is really just putting ourselves in this present moment because that is all that is real right now, okay? Uh, the past isn't real. The future is not here yet, okay? This is what's real right now. So let's make the most of that. Now, how do we do that, okay? Okay. Um, well, I have a whole list that I give out to my clients of exercises that you can use to practice mindfulness. Um, the first one that I like to tell people to do is to slow down, okay? Um, there is no need to be rushing around like a lunatic. Take your time. Um, there is, you know, focus on, on what you're doing at the moment. There is no reason that you have to answer the doorbell or the phone or answer a text. I heard my phone. You probably heard it. Uh, there's a text waiting for me and I'm not, oh, stopping the recording so I can go check my text. It can wait. Okay. I'm taking my time. Um, I happen to be a klutz. Okay. I trip over my own two feet. It's terrible. Um, I reduced my injuries to myself uh, by being klutzy by about 75% just by becoming mindful. Okay. Um, so, and a lot of that involves slowing down. Um, be aware of what's happening around you. Um, be observant of your environment. Um, just like policemen are trained to do. Um, they're trained to be observant about what's going on around them uh, for their safety and the safety of the people that they're protecting. Um, and you can do this for your own mental health. Um, okay, so what am I seeing in this room right now? What, am, what does my environment look like? You can probably hear the two snoring dogs that are on the floor behind me. Um, I'm hearing that in my mind and I just bought them brand new pillows and they're just loving it. Um, I can see a TV that's on my desk here that I use, uh, sometimes instead of using my laptop screen. Um, I have a beautiful antique lamp that my husband bought me for my birthday last summer. And I, I think it's just magnificent. It's beautiful. Um, I have these really cool curtains over here that are, um, sunflowers. I just repainted this room a couple of months ago and I really like the color. Um, you can't see it, but there's a, uh, a photograph up there that I took of some daffodils that I think is really cool. And I hung it up on the, on the wall. So I'm noticing everything in my environment. I'm also noticing 
the, the comfortable clothes that I'm wearing because I really like to wear comfortable clothes. I can feel the soft cotton on my skin. I can feel the comfortable shoes on my feet. Um, I can hear noises from the street, which you might not be able to hear. And of course the snoring dogs. Um, so I am noticing my environment. Okay. I'm also noticing how I feel right now. I'm feeling very comfortable. I'm feeling very confident because I know that these techniques that I am going to be putting in videos for you guys, I know that they work. Okay. I know they work because they work for me. Um, another thing that you can do is um, notice things that you don't know, normally pay attention to. Um, how many times do we drive down our own street and we don't notice um, a tree that we pass every day? We don't notice our neighbor's house. Uh, be observant, you know, focus in on some of this stuff like, wow, look at that cloud. That's amazing. Um, and we're going to talk about some exercises to do that when we speak of developing an attitude of gratitude, which is going to be in another video. So stay tuned for that. Um, focus on what you're doing right now. What are you working on right now? What is the task that you're doing? Um, imagine something that you love to do. If you're um, an artist and you love to paint or you love to draw, think about how you lose yourself in that activity. What is an activity that you do that you lose yourself in? And lose yourself in each individual moment in the same way. So when you're driving, um, think about and again, we're going to talk about this a little more in developing an attitude of gratitude, but think about what's happening. You're in a box hurtling down the road doing, well, if you're like me, you're doing a little more than 55 miles an hour, but think about that. That's a miracle. Okay. Observe what's going on around you. Look at this. I'm driving. I'm wearing my driver's hat, which is another technique that you can use. What hat are you wearing? I'm wearing my driver's hat. I'm wearing my paying attention to my kids homework hat. <laughs> I'm helping my kids with the homework hat. I'm wearing my dishwasher hat. I'm wearing my cook hat, uh, making dinner for everybody. I'm wearing this morning, I was wearing my food shopping hat because I went food shopping and bought food for the week. So think about what hat am I wearing and what am I doing and focus in on it. Um, notice, notice it. Um, one of the chores in the house that I really used to hate to do was washing the dishes. I don't have a dishwasher. I live in an old house. Um, so I wash the dishes every day and what a pain in the butt that was. And then I started paying attention, feeling how the nice, the water felt nice and warm on my hands, noticing the colors that were reflecting off the soap suds, um, observing the stack of clean dishes as they started mounting up in the dish drainer and how nice and neat that looked. And now dishwashing is actually one of my uh, more favorite chores to do in the house. So by paying attention and finding wonder and amazement in, in these moments, um, that's going to bring you a lot of happiness and gratitude is going to help with that too. Um, like I said, we'll talk about that in another video. Um, so another thing that you can do is uh, when you're eating uh, to develop a mindfulness practice, notice and observe every bite. What are the textures? What are the flavors? What are the aromas? Okay. Um, even if you don't like what you're eating or it doesn't taste quite that great, um, observe it without judgment. Okay. So, okay. So this is what it's like to eat something that tastes a little bitter. Um, this is what it's like to walk down the street in the rain without an umbrella. Um, observe what you're doing. Uh, notice what's going on around you without judgment. Okay. Um, if you're going to pass judgment on an event or on a thing or on a person, make it positive judgment. Um, pay attention when all else fails and you can't think of anything else that you can do to focus in on the moment, focus in on your breathing. Okay. Notice what it's like when your chest and your abdomen rise, feel the cool air coming in through your nose and exiting through your mouth. Um, this helps with stress. Um, this helps you learn mindfulness, okay? And in, your in the next video that I put up for you, we're going to talk about developing an attitude of gratitude and positivity, um, which is another layer that gets put on top of mindfulness to create a life of happiness and stress-free environment. Um, so if you would like to learn more about creating a life of 
a lack of stress and full of happiness, please feel free to reach out to me, Susan Patang at The Quiet Zone Coaching. Um, www.thequietzonecoaching.com is my website. And there are links there that you can use to schedule a free uh, consultation discovery call so we can see what's going on in your life and I can determine how I can help you get where you want to be. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next Quiet Zone recording.